By now, you've probably heard about the situation of a potential ban of TP-Link routers in the United States. I've recently received some comments on my previous videos because I use a TP-Link router and many people are asking if they should still be using this equipment. So in this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be providing a little context about this potential ban and I'm also going to be explaining my current approach to this situation and it will hopefully help you make decisions about your home network moving forward. So what's the situation on the potential ban of TP-Link routers in the United States? Well, the Commerce, Defense, and Justice Departments, they're all currently investigating TP-Link routers for a couple of reasons. The first is that there are ties between TP-Link and the Chinese government, so there are some political aspects there, but most importantly, there are concerns about the security of TP-Link routers. As a result of this investigation, multiple news outlets have put out articles saying that there could be a potential ban of TP-Link routers in the United States at some point in 2025. If a ban was put in place, this would follow the mold of Huawei routers and Huawei equipment, as this equipment was banned in the United States back in 2022 because of Huawei's ties to the Chinese government and potential security concerns about their devices. There are a few articles that go in depth about this situation. I'll link to those in the description if you want to take a deep dive. Okay, so why is this such a big deal? Well, the reason it's such a big deal is because of the scope and the utilization of TP-Link routers in the United States. It's said that about 65% of households use TP-Link equipment. And on top of that, internet service providers have contracts with TP-Link. So that way, when they rent equipment out to users, for example, if you're renting your modem and router from your internet service provider, TP-Link will make those devices as well. And it's said that there are over 300 internet service providers with these contracts in place with TP-Link. So the trouble here is if you're renting your router from your internet service provider and a ban's put in place, it's not going to be really clear if you have a TP-Link router or not. And that's because when internet service providers contract their routers out to manufacturers like TP-Link, the manufacturer of the device isn't clearly labeled on the device itself. So you may not even know if you have a TP-Link router in your home or not if you're renting this equipment. Okay, so it's pretty clear that if a ban were to be put in place, this would have a widespread impact on home internet users in the United States. But now let's talk about the specific security concerns of using TP-Link equipment. So when I researched the specific security concerns of TP-Link routers, here's where things got really interesting. The first incident that they talk about is how TP-Link routers were compromised with a password spraying attack. This is essentially somebody taking control of your router by guessing the username and password of that device. The devices that are the most susceptible to this kind of attack are those that don't change the default username and password that come with the device. It's good security practice for everybody to change their username and password as soon as they set up their router, but for those that don't, this is obviously a security risk. What I find interesting about this though, is there's nothing particular about TP-Link devices that would make them susceptible to this attack. Any router that uses the default username and password is just as likely to be compromised by this sort of attack. Okay, so nothing specific to TP-Link there. What about the other incident that they mentioned? The other incident that they talked about was a little more vague. It was basically routers getting controlled and being used to perform attacks on other infrastructure and other equipment. What this does is it basically masks who the real attacker is, right? If somebody from China wants to attack, say, a power plant and the infrastructure of a power plant, they would basically use your router to perform those attacks once they gain access to it. And that way it looks like your router is the one carrying out the attacks on the infrastructure and not the hacker in China that's actually performing the attack. This incident also wasn't super specific. It didn't say if there was a dedicated backdoor or something within the code of TP-Link routers that allow this attack or make this attack easier to happen. 
let's just say for the sake of example that there is some sort of backdoor or there's a way for the Chinese government to get into your router. What are the risks and what would they do with that access? Well, more than likely, they would do exactly what was detailed in that second incident. They would use your router to perform attacks on other infrastructure. The other use case here would be to form a botnet. That's essentially taking all of these routers, all these devices that they control, and all of them attacking one thing at the same time. For example, if you have thousands of devices all sending requests to one piece of infrastructure or one website at the same time, it could take it down because that website would get overwhelmed with requests. So is it possible if a Chinese hacker gets access to your router, they could use it to spy on you individually? Yeah, I guess it's possible, but to be honest, they probably have bigger fish to fry and they would use that router's access for either a botnet or to launch other attacks. With all that context out of the way, I'm gonna talk about my approach moving forward with this current situation and you can make your own decision about what you want to do with your home network. I just want to be clear that this opinion is mine alone. Do your own research if you're looking to make decisions or make changes to your home network, but this is just how I feel about the current situation. With that said, I'm currently using a TP-Link router, and I'm not going to make any changes at this current time. The reason for that is that right now there's no ban put in place. There's simply been a few articles talking about a potential ban, and to me, I'm not gonna take any action until an official ban is put in place. Secondly, from the evidence or the things that I read in these articles, there was nothing specific about TP-Link routers that indicate that they're any less secure than any other router on the market. For me personally, I know a password spraying attack is not a concern for my individual router, that's because I don't have a default username and password for the device. When I first set up my router, I had to create my own unique password so I know that there's no default password being used. On top of that, I've kept my router's firmware updated, so any previous vulnerabilities that were known about the device, they've been patched with the latest firmware and the latest software that I've downloaded for it. I would advise against being reactionary to this potential ban, because there are definitely political forces at play here. The US House of Representatives alleged that TP-Link was engaged in predatory pricing practices. And what this means is there's a reason that there's a 65% market share of TP-Link routers in the United States. That's because these devices are a lot cheaper than other routers that you can find. The House of Representatives is alleging that TP-Link is being sponsored by the Chinese government and that's why they can supply their routers for such low prices. And as a result, they have such a large market share. If the Chinese government is paying TP-Link or subsidizing their equipment, they're able to offer it to United States customers at a lower price. There are obviously ulterior motives that could be at play here. This could all be part of China's strategy to get a large market share in the United States. And then if there is a backdoor in these devices, it allows them to build a botnet. But at the same time, there's been no evidence that I've seen that this is the case. What I'm saying here is that if there was a known backdoor in TP-Link routers, that would have been all over the news already and a ban would have been put in place. The fact that they're talking about a potential ban in 2025, that leads me to believe that this might be more political than it is security related. And that's why I'm gonna wait and see before making any decisions. If you have a TP-Link router in your home, the same security practices apply as always. You wanna make sure you're not using your default username and password. I've made a video detailing how to change your router's password if you need to go and do that. On top of that, you wanna make sure that your router's firmware is updated as much as possible and you have the latest version of it downloaded. I've made a video about this as well that you can check out if you're not sure if your router's firmware is up to date. I'll continue to monitor this situation, and if a ban is put in place, I'll make sure to make a follow-up video that details some of your options and what you should be looking at to replace your TP-Link equipment. But for now, I would say hold the line, don't make any crazy reactionary decisions, and we'll see what happens later in 2025. 
If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. If you found this video useful or helpful or you think others would benefit from seeing it, please give it a like. And lastly, if you want to stay apprised of any content or updates about this situation that I put out, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll see if I put out a video update and you can make the right decision for your home network. As always, thanks for watching this episode from Network From Home and we'll catch you on the next one.